Hey nursing students, welcome to Simple Nursing's mini lesson series. In this video, we'll be breaking down the essential steps of how to complete a head to toe assessment. If you want to go beyond this video, our Simple Nursing membership has detailed videos and study guides on all the body parts covered in this head to toe assessment, as well as extra resources on every nursing school topic, so you can be fully prepared. Hey nursing students, in this video, we'll be breaking down the essential steps of how to complete a head to toe assessment. A head-to-toe assessment is just what it sounds like. Using a systematic method to check out all the body systems from the top of the head to the tips of the toes. The info we gather helps us to figure out any client health problems and form nursing plans of care. So before we jump into it, if you want a head-to-toe assessment checklist to follow along, head over to the link in the comments to download yours today. Let's begin. So first, we gather all the supplies you'll need before you start. Then take a minute to make the client feel comfortable. Make sure the environment protects client privacy. Then perform hand hygiene and you're ready to begin. So start by asking the client to state their full name and date of birth. Use this opportunity to confirm that your client is AO times four. Remember, assessment actually starts as soon as you enter the room, kind of like a detective gathering clues. Next, we collect vital signs. We're talking heart rate, blood pressure, temperature, O2 saturation, respiratory rate, and a pain scale rating 0 to 10. Now, as you can see, normal ranges for vital signs are listed in this full study guide. So after the vital signs, we collect the height and weight. You'll use these values later to calculate the client's BMI. Now, as we complete our assessment, we'll check hair, skin, and nails with specific parts of our exam. So first, let's start at the top and inspect the head. Confirm the skin color is normal for ethnicity and that the head is rounded and symmetrical. Next, we palpate the cranium for masses or indentations. And always look at the hair and make sure there's no infestations like lice or even hair loss from baldness or alopecia. Be sure to check any facial hair too. Also, go ahead and check the client's overall facial expressions. Look for any facial drooping. That could be indicative of a stroke, like a CVA, or even Bell's palsy. Now moving over to the eyes. Look at the eyelids, the sclera, the irises, the pupils, and conjunctiva. Check the position of the eye in the eye socket. Note any abnormal findings. For example, eye swelling, yellow sclera, unequal pupil size, or even crossed eyes. Then we test that no nystagmus occurs through six cardinal fields of gaze, and that pupils are equal, round, and reactive to light with accommodation. That's an acronym known as PERLA. Now moving on to the ears. Look at the outside of the ear and note any redness, discharge, or abnormal findings. Next, we palpate and move the ear, checking for any tenderness. Move the tragus and palpate the mastoid process. Now for the nose. Make sure the nose is midline and note any septal deviations or nasal drainage. Then look inside the nares and check patency. Have the client occlude one nostril and breathe out the other. Then repeat this on the opposite side. And very lastly, we palpate the sinuses for tenderness. Now moving on to the mouth. We first want to check lip color. We don't want dusky or blue lips. That could indicate an issue with oxygenation. So next, we have to look inside the mouth. We have to assess the gums and inside the cheeks, the tongue surface, and under the tongue. Ask the client to stick out their tongue and say, ah, make sure the uvula is in midline. And we also note any cavities, any loose or broken teeth, tonsil exudate, or even thrush. Have the client swallow and then test the gag reflex. Now down to the neck. Inspect the neck and make sure that the trachea is midline. Note any lumps or bulges. Have the client move the head side to side and up and down. Then with the head at a 45 degree angle, have the client turn the head to the side. Look for any JVD, that jugular vein distension, that happens when clients are in fluid volume overload. Next, we palpate the trachea to confirm its midline with no tenderness or lumps. We also want to palpate the lymph nodes for enlargement or tenderness. And very lastly, we're going to check the carotid arteries by palpating one at a time. Then finally, auscultate each separately by listening with the bell of the stethoscope for brutes. Okay, now we've made it down to the arms. Look for any lesions, redness, or swelling. 
Note any deformities in the joints or fingers or any issues with the fingernails. If there are IVs present, examine the site and the dressing. Also, check for any dialysis grafts or fistulas by simply verifying a brute and thrill are present. Next, we palpate bilateral brachial and radial pulses. Then check for the capillary refill time and skin turgor. Now, very lastly, we check range of motion for the fingers and hands. And we also want to check for arm drift, which can be seen if the client has had a stroke. So simply have the client close their eyes and hold out their arms. The arms should not drift upward. Now for the chest. Inspect the chest and observe the effort of breathing. Examine the AP diameter. We see that barrel chest in COPD due to air trapping. Next, listen to the heart sounds and then lung sounds. So for heart sounds, first we listen to the S1 and S2 at the landmarks with the diaphragm of the stethoscope. Next, listen to the apical pulse for one full minute. Then listen for murmurs at the same locations with the bell. Now for a very helpful diagram on stethoscope placement, check out the heart sounds video located in your Simple Nursing membership. And if you need an easy way to remember these, here's a simple memory trick. Now, when you're listening to the lung sounds, you're mainly listening for abnormal sounds. So, from the front, we start at the apex of the lungs and listen to each lobe with the diaphragm. Compare the sound from one side to the other, then listen to the back the same way. Now, we go into much more detail of each lung sound in our membership video titled Abnormal Lung Sounds. So, be sure to check out the full video there. Now, on to the abdomen. Remember, we always look first, listen second, and palpate last. So, looking first, we want to be sure to note any contour and if any pulsations are present. A large pulsating mass can indicate the aorta is bulging, which is known as a triple A, abdominal aortic aneurysm. This is like a ticking time bomb that is very deadly. Now, don't forget that you're going to want to listen to the abdomen immediately after visual inspection and start in the right left quadrant. Listen clockwise in each quadrant for bowel sounds with the diaphragm. If you don't hear any sounds, then listen for a full five minutes. Switch to the bell and then check for any brutes over the aortic artery, the renal arteries, and the iliac arteries. Then move on to palpation. We want to use light palpation first and then deep. We want to note any pain or tenderness, masses or lumps, or even rigidity. Also, be on the lookout for a PEG or colostomy bag. Colostomy stomas should be pink and moist, never dusky, purple, gray, or blue. Now, since we're in the abdominal area, a urinary assessment is also necessary. So ask about bowel and bladder habits. For example, when was your last bowel movement? And also, be sure to note if a Foley is present. Now, for the legs, feet, and ankles... We need to check PMSC, which stands for Pulses, Motor, Sensation, and Cap Refill. We also want to note the color, temperature, hair growth, and if there's any redness and swelling. Peripheral vascular disease can be a common issue. We look at the toenails and check capillary refill and sensation. Now, we also want to palpate the popliteal, the posterior tibial, and the dorsal pedis pulses. And finally, check for range of motion. Okay, now we've made it all the way down the front of the body. Now let's check the backside, starting at the head and moving all the way down. We want to be sure to pay close attention to the spine and the area over the tailbone. A big tip here, make sure that you've turned your client to get a complete look at all the areas of your client's skin from the front and the back. Whew. Okay, I know that was a lot, but after watching this video, you should have a better understanding of the essentials of head-to-toe assessment. Remember, future nurse, if it's not documented, it's not done. So be sure to document your assessment findings accurately and thoroughly. Now, if you're looking for a more in-depth review, be sure to watch through your Simple Nursing membership videos. Not a member yet? Well, head to the link here to check it out. And please don't forget to like this video and share with a classmate if you find it helpful. And subscribe for more nursing content. And also be sure to check out some of our related videos, study guides, and other resources for a deeper understanding at simplenursing.com. I'll see you there.